It is four o'clock. We'll call the regular meeting of planning, programming, and zoning commission to order. First item on the agenda is the approval of today's agenda. And I would ask if we could combine 5A4 and 5B1, if that's possible. The staff reports are. Yeah. I was thinking of that. Lysta Kawai will make the motion to approve the agenda. Okay. Second, Trost. Okay. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Next is approval of the minutes from the regular meeting on May 9th. Any revisions or discussion? If not, okay. Do we have a second? Second, sure. Okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. Next, we'll have the financial report, please, from April uh, 2023, I think that's supposed to say. This is Schrader with staff, so that puts us at 83% of the fiscal year. Uh, looking down through the expense sides, we're doing uh, pretty good. So like um, Categories are 79%, 73%, 62%, so we're under there, doing good. And then on the revenue side, um, a lot of them are... Uh, over 83% uh, with a grand total at 81. So we're really close to right on track. Make a motion to approve the financial report. Schoberg. Second, Trost. Okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the report is accepted. Next um, item on the agenda is a time for oral presentations. This is for anyone who's here in the chambers or by phone or Zoom who's here to speak on a non-agenda item. Is there anyone on phone or Zoom? Madam, Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Yes, hold on a minute. We were getting some feedback. Uh, Dave Bolton, uh, okay. can you hear me? Yep. You're good. Yeah. At, 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 at the last planning and zoning meeting, I brought up about the flagpole out off of 218 by Aspro, and Noel said he was going to look into it and that there's a possibility that planning and zoning had to deal with a few issues. Do you know if that's been resolved yet? Because I'm still getting complaints from neighbors in that area because they were promised a flagpole and that cell phone tower went up. Uh, this is Schrader with staff. I don't know a, a lot but I, I know he did um, discuss the situation he was having the uh, lease pulled and the previous approvals pulled I think the plan was to uh, do a amendment to the lease uh, to do the ground mount flag uh, since it's no longer an option to do a flag on the cell tower pole itself so are we anywhere closer than with that amendment to that lease agreement? I'll, I'll have to double check with Noel. I'm not sure. Awesome. If you could just email me, I'd appreciate it. It was brought up at the Leisure Services Commission meeting again also today. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on phone or Zoom? Okay. Anyone else in the chambers here to speak on a non-agenda item? Okay, then we'll go on to new business. The time is 4.04 p.m. and a hearing is scheduled at this time for a request by Hearst and Sons contractors to rezone 0.46 acres from R21 and two family residence district and M1 light industrial district to M1 light industrial district located west of 622 Ainsboro Avenue this is on pages 12 through 19 of the packet. At this time, we should receive in place on file a statement of verification signed by Emmeline. Salgia? Saliga, excuse me, Emily Saliga, stating I, Emily Saliga, do certify that a copy of the attached letter, overview map, aerial map, notice map, 
site plan and elevation drawings were mailed to the individuals on the attached list on June 13th, 2023. Could we have a motion to receive and place this notice on file? So moved. We have a second. Second, Schoberg. Okay, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion is carried. Next, we'll have the staff report, please. Okay, yeah, this is uh, Seth Heiberger with the staff report. Uh, the applicant's requesting to rezone the property in question in order to better utilize the proposed rezone area for M1 light uh, industrial district uses. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood, uh, which mostly consists of vacant land with the budding commercial and industrial uses in Ansboro Avenue. Uh, the applicant is in the process of selling the property and they wanted all the land to be zoned M1 light industrial district. Uh, the property has split zoning and the R2 portion has historically been part of the business. Uh, the request to rezone the land from R2 uh, to one and two, fam one and two family dist uh, residence district to M1 light industrial district is not anticipated to have a negative impact upon nearby properties or adjacent land uses. Uh, Trolley Trail is located 775 feet north of the proposed rezone area. Uh, there is existing sidewalk along uh, Ansboro Avenue. Um, the area of the proposed uh, site is currently zoned R2 1 and 2 Family Residence District and has been zoned as such since 1969. Uh, to the north of south, commercial light industrial uses zone M1 light industrial district. To the east, Ansboro Avenue with commercial and residential uses zone C2 commercial district and R2 1 and 2 Family Residence District. To the west is Galloway Park zoned R2 1 and 2 Family Residence District. Uh, commercial and industrial structures within the immediate rezone area were constructed between the 1940s and 1990s. Uh, no buffers will be required and, until something is constructed on the site. Uh, rezoning of the land would not appear to have a negative impact upon drainage. Uh, no portion of the property is located within a special flood hazard area as indicated by FEMA. Um, there's a 10-inch sanitary sewer main, 4-inch drain tile, and 27-inch storm sewer main underneath Ansboro Avenue. Um, nothing will be impacted with this rezone. Uh, the future land use map designates this property, parks up its base, schools, hospitals, government facilities, public areas, and airport. A special permit request would not be in conformance with the future land use uh, map for this area. A uh, special permit request would be in conformance with such designation, okay? Um, the site uh, had uh, split zoning, uh, but has been historically used for, for the business. Uh, therefore, approving this rezone request would be in character with the area. The applicant has no plans to subdivide the property. Uh, therefore, staff recommends the request by Hurst & Sons Contractors LLC to rezone 0 0.46 acres from R212 Family Residence District to M1 Line Industrial District at 622 Ansboro Avenue be approved for the following reasons. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact upon pedestrian and traffic conditions in the area. Thank you. Any initial questions for staff? Okay. Is the applicant here and want to address the commission? Okay. Do you want to address the commission? Okay. <laughs> Does the commission have any questions? Okay. Anyone else on Zoom or the phone to speak on this agenda item? Okay. Anyone else here in the chambers here to speak on this agenda item? Okay. Do we want to close the public hearing? I motion to close the public hearing. Trost? Second. Second. Lights to co. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The public hearing is closed. Do we want to? I'll make a motion to approve the request by Hurston Sons Contractors LLC to rezone 0.46 acres from R2, 1, and 2 family residents. District to M1 Light Industrial District at 622 Ainsboro Avenue. Do we have a second? Second, Shirk. Okay. Any discussion by the commission? Yes, this is Lights to Co. Uh, by rezoning that portion of the land, 
for the intent of selling, when someone were to purchase that and decided they wanted to do more industrial activity in that portion of the land, would they be less restricted from doing so, such as storing industrial chemicals or uh, maybe supplies? This is Schrader with staff. So th there's um, a portion of the property that even though it's zoned R2 residential has been used as part of the business uh, as a storage area. So it could continue as such. So it um, rezoning it does um, open the potential for like if they did a, an expansion of the building um, that maybe would, you know, get close to that former R2 line or even encroach into the R2 line, um, then that would be possible. Whereas um, without the rezone storage on that area can continue, but any sort of um, expansion of a non-conforming use, like building a new building, um, would not be permitted. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion by the commission? Okay, if not, we'll take a vote. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Okay, the time is 4.11, and a hearing is scheduled at this time for a request by Ridgeway Heights LLC, doing business as San Marnin Heights Senior Living, to rezone 4.6 acres of the R4RP planned multiple residence district and the BP Business Park District to R4RP plan multiple residence district to allow for the construction of a 110 unit senior housing complex located east of 815 Tower Park Drive. This is on pages uh, 20 through 36 of your packet. At this time, we should receive in place on file a statement of verification signed by Emily Saliga stating, I, Emily Saliga, do hereby certify that all properties within 250 feet of the request are owned by the city of Waterloo. We have a motion to receive and place this notice on file. So moved, Schoberg. Second, Sir Fling. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Next, we'll have the staff report, please. This is Blanco staff. The applicant is requesting to rezone the property in question to construct a three story, 110 unit senior living facility. A trail will be constructed through the San Martin Business Park development as lots are developed. The area of the proposed site is currently zoned R4RP, planned multiple residence district, and BP Business Park District, and has been zoned as such since it was rezoned from A1 Agricultural District on February 25th, 2004. Zoning land uses and their zoning are as follows. To the north is vacant land and residences zoned R3RP, planned multiple residence district. To the south is vacant land zone BP, Business Park District, and Highway 20. To the east is commercial development and vacant land zone R4RP, Plan Multiple Residence District, BP, Business Park District, and CP, Plan Commercial District. And to the west is commercial development and vacant land zone R4RP, Plan Multiple Residence District, BP, Business Park District, and CP, Plan Commercial District. The applicant is requesting to rezone a 4.6 acre property east of 815 Tower Park Drive to construct a 110 unit senior living facility. The proposed parking lot contains 87 stalls with four of those stalls being reserved for handicapped parking. Per the zoning ordinance, one parking space is required for every two units and five visitor parking spaces for every 40 units. This equates to 69 total required parking stalls and 87 are being provided to exceed the requirement. The site plan shows future parking expansions on the north end of the parking lot. The applicant is proposing pre-finished lap siding with stone veneer for the facade of the building. The proposed design is compatible with the surrounding area. Newton noted the engineering department notes are included in the staff report and the fire department noted aerial access was discussed with the applicant at their pre-construction meeting and they were given a copy of Appendix D. Therefore, staff recommends that they request by Ridgeway Heights LLC, DBA, San Martin Heights Senior Living, 
to rezone 4.6 acres from R4 RP Plan Multiple Residence District and BP Business Park District to R4 RP Plan Multiple Residence District to allow for the construction of a 110 unit senior housing complex located east of 815 Tower Park Drive be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area. The request would not appear to have a negative impact upon pedestrian and tra traffic conditions within the surrounding area. And the proposed design will be compatible with the surrounding commercial uses and proposed commercial uses. And you guys um, should have all received a copy of that new site plan as well. The one in the packet was an outdated version. The main changes between those is the amount of parking. Mm. Thank you. I didn't get one. Thank you. Um, one here. Oh, here comes one. Hmm. Any initial questions for staff? Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. <laughs> Is someone here for the LLC that would like to speak? Um, hello, I'm Gaius Nelson with uh, the architectural firm. Hi. Is there anything that you'd like to uh, present to the commission or does the commission have any questions? Um, I, I think I'd just uh, like to relay that the, um, the developer owner um, is very excited about this project and, uh, you know, the rezoning half of this site was already zoned properly. We're just making sure the entire site meets the required zoning with this uh, rezoning of the property. And um, we look forward to moving forward. Any questions by the commission? Um, anyone else on the phone or by Zoom um, wanting to speak on this agenda item? Madam Chair? Yes. I was just curious if they've resolved the issues of aerial access to all points of that building. Um, do you know or should I ask that? I, I'm not sure on that. Does the applicant's representative have any knowledge on that? Um, we made some adjustments. We haven't had a final sign off from the fire department at this point in time. Um, aerial access isn't required to all points. It's required to a certain amount of the building. We are also fully fire sprinklered, which allows some leeway in terms of um, what the requirements are in terms of distances and um, areas that need to be ha have access. Are you still working with the fire department on this or has it been finalized? Um, you know, we're, we, we're still, um, you know, in the process with the fire department and, you know, willing to work with them to um, provide a plan that meets their requirements. Excellent. Thank you. I do have a question for the commission or for the uh, staff. Um, I just want to make sure it's clear to everybody that uh, the permitting process for the, for the design and construction has to pass through the building department and fire department and that our our rezoning of this is not contingent upon that approval. That they, they would still have to get approval to meet all those fire department and building code requirements. This is Schrader with staff. Um, it, it would be subject to that regardless, but right. we do normally uh, add that uh, on to our recommendation just as kind of a, a good reminder. So we're certainly open to whoever makes a motion on this, adding that in there subject to the final site plan, meeting all applicable city code regulations, et cetera. Including but not limited to parking, drainage, landscaping, etc. That's our typical wording we use. Sounds so. good. <laughs> Anyone else in the chamber is here to speak on this agenda item? Okay. Do we want to close the public hearing? So, so move. Lice to go. Pro second. Okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Do we have a motion? This is Schoberg. I make a motion to approve the request by Ridgeway Heights LLC 
DBA, St. Martin Heights Senior Living to rezone 4.6 <laughs> acres from R4 RP Planned Multi Residence District and BP Business Park District to R4 RP Planned Multi Residence, Residence District to allow for the construction of a 110 unit senior living complex located east of 815 Tower Park Drive. Okay, do we have a second? Second, surfing. Okay. Any discussion by the commission? Okay, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, the time is 4.20 p.m. And a hearing is scheduled at this time for a request by uh, NADRO Realty LLC for a site plan amendment to allow for construction of multiple contractor suites totaling 57,600 square feet plus a 40 foot by 60 foot 2,400 square foot covered driveway in the M2P planned industrial district located at the southeast corner of Leversey Road and Warp Drive. This is pages 37 through 50 of the packet. At this time, we should receive and place on file a statement of verification signed by Emily Saliga stating, I, Emily Saliga, um, is there a note? Uh, it's just the, okay. It's all right. Um, yeah, it's the city of Waterloo or the, this one? Um, this one. Okay. Um, do certify that a copy of the attached letter, overview map, aerial map, notice map, site plan, and elevation drawings were mailed to the individuals attached on uh, list on June 13th, 2023. We have a motion to receive and place this notice on file. So moved, so thing. Okay. Second, Schoberg. Okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion is carried. We'll have the staff report, please. This is Dorn off with staff. The applicant's requesting to construct new contractor suites in the Waterloo Air and Rail Park. The request to construct a contractor suites will not appear to have a negative impact on surrounding area as it will be, appear to be compatible with the proposed industrial development in the area. The area in question has been zoned M2P Plan Industrial District since June 7th. 2010 when it was, zoned, was rezoned from A1 Agricultural District. Surrounding land uses and their zoning designations are as follows. To the north is new industrial development, vacant land in the Waterloo Regional Airport, zone M2P, Plan Industrial District. To the south is new industrial development, vacant land, zone M2P, Plan Industrial District. To the east is new industrial development, vacant land, Waterloo Regional Airport, also zoned M2P, Plan Industrial District. And to the west is residential and vacant land, in the city of Cedar Falls. A drainage plan will need to be submitted and stormwater plan. The surrounding areas currently has several industrial projects being constructed. Otherwise, it's vacant land to the north, south, and east and adjacent to the Waterloo Regional Airport. The homes to the west in Cedar Falls were built between the 1930s and 1980s. The applicant is requesting a site plan amendment to construct a contractor suite at Waterloo Air and Rail Park. The west side of the site will include two 60 by 180, 10,800 square foot buildings connected with a covered loading dock. The east side of the complex will include four connected buildings, including a 100 by 120, 12,000 square foot building, two 40 by 60, 2,400 square foot buildings, and a 120 by 160 square foot, 19,200 square foot building for a total of 57,600 square feet. All the buildings will have steel siding with multiple roll up doors. There will be a single driveway off of Wart Drive that will serve all the buildings, along with a service drive to the west that will serve the two westerly buildings and the covered loading dock. Parking requirements are one space for each 250 um, square feet of office space and one space for every two persons employed, maximum shift on the premises and will need to meet this requirement at the time building, um, building permit review. The site plan currently shows 38 parking spaces. The area site plan amendment had previously been approved by ordinance 5493 on May 20th, 2019 for a truck wash facility. However, that project um, never began in construction. Um, 
During tech review, the fire department noted they will, they will need a turnaround on the south side of the property. And if the building is over 33 tall, they would need aerial access. However, the building plans they showed only showed 16 foot tall buildings. So that would also, once the type of um, people that will be moving, companies that would be moving in would determine what kind of sprinklers and fire walls would be required. So that will be needed at, during the um, building and fire review. Therefore, staff recommends that the um, request um, for a site plan amendment to allow for construction of multiple contractor suites totaling 57,600 square feet plus a 40 by 60, 24 square foot covered loading dock in the M2P plan industrial district be located southeast corner of Leversey Road and Warp Drive be approved for the following reasons. The request is in conformance with the comprehensive plan and future land use map for the area. The request will not appear to um, have a negative impact on traffic conditions area as there is already addition, um, another addition to the industrial park, not appear to have a negative impact surrounding the area with the following conditions that the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, et cetera, including but not limited parking, landscaping, screening, drainage, setbacks, et cetera. Okay. Any initial questions for staff? Applicant here or someone on behalf of the applicant like to address the commission? Okay. Is anyone else on the phone or by Zoom who would like to speak on this agenda item? Okay. Anyone else in the chambers who would like to speak on this agenda item? All right. Do we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved, Trost. Second, Shirk. Okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The public hearing is closed. Do we have a motion from the commission? Surfling, I'll make a motion that we approve the request by Nadro Realty LLC for site plan amendment to allow for construction of multiple contractor suites totaling 57,600 square feet plus a 40 by 60 foot, 2,400 square foot covered loading dock in the M2P planned industrial district located at the, at the southeast corner of Leversey Road and Warp Drive be approved for the following reasons. The request is in conformance with the comprehensive plan and future land use map for this area. In addition, the request appears not to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area as this would be another addition to the industrial park and the, and the request does not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area with the following conditions. That the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, including but not limited to parking, landscaping, screening, drainage, and setbacks, et cetera. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, second. Trost. Okay. Any discussion by the commission? Uh, this is Commissioner Wilbur. I would just note that it appears that the tech review notes are covered by that condition then that was in the motion. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The motion is carried. First one. Sorry. <laughs> okay, the time is 4 29 p.m., and a hearing is scheduled at this time for request by E. Castro Roofing and Siding LLC for a site plan amendment and a change in conditions to allow for a contractor business with outside storage that will be screened from view in the R4CZ conditional zoning district located at 42 Franklin. Street, sorry, um, 
At this time, we should re receive and place on file a statement of verification signed by Emily Saliga, stating I, Emily Saliga, do hereby certify that a copy of the attached letter overview map, aerial, aerial map, notice map, site plan, and elevation drawings were mailed to the individuals on the attached list on June 13th, 2023. We have a motion to receive and place this uh, notice on file. So moved. Place to go. Second. Surfing. Okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. And we'll also um, have the request by the same LLC for the special permit to allow for outside storage at the contractor's business that will be screened from um, in, in the conditional zoning district located at 42 Franklin Street as well. We'll have both staff reports, please. This is Blanco staff. The applicant is requesting a site plan amendment and a special permit and changing conditions to allow a contractor use with outside storage at a site conditionally zoned for a retail appliance store with no outside storage allowed. The request to allow a contractor use would not appear to have a negative impact upon the surrounding area as Franklin Street is a commercial corridor as long as the outside storage is properly screened. The area in question has been zoned R4CZ conditional zoning district since it was rezoned from R3 multiple residence district on April 7th, 2004. Surrounding land uses and their zoning designations are as follows. To the north is residences and Salvation Army Men's Shelter, zoned R3, multiple residence district. To the south and east are residences, zoned R3, multiple residence district. To the west is residences, zoned R3, multiple residence district. And Rose of Waterloo Assisted Living, zoned R4, RP, planned residence district. Screening is required around the entire property. The sides and rear of the property shall have a six foot solid privacy fence. There should be a non-solid fence within the five foot front yard setback to allow visibility for drivers in the alley and driveway. The chain link fence along the front property line shall remain, but the applicant shall place shrubs in the five foot setback between the chain link fence and paved area for additional screening from Franklin Street. The property in question is currently zoned for an appliance retail center and does not currently allow a contractor business or outside storage. The applicant is requesting a site plan amendment to allow for the contractor business and to change the existing conditions to allow for outdoor storage on the site. The applicant is applying for a special permit in relation to this request to allow for the equipment yard in the R4 CZ conditional zoning district, which is only permitted in a commercial zone when approved by a special permit. The applicant is requesting to pave most of the site and has placed gravel in the areas that are being requested to be paved. No part of any vehicular use area or parking space shall be closer than five feet to any established lot line. This shall allow for a reasonably designed entryway for the access from the property line, but shall not allow for a lengthy access drive closer than the required setback. The site shall have a five foot required setback between the property lines and the pavement areas along Franklin Street. Staff is supportive of a variance to of a variance request to have less than the five foot setbacks along the sides. As stated in the zoning ordinance in section 1015.110, contractor businesses, including contracting equipment yards, are allowed in the C2 commercial district, provided that equipment yards shall be extensively screened on each side facing a residential district and on each side facing a public street by a fence wall or densely planted compact hedge not less than six feet in height and for equipment yards upon approval of a special permit by the Board of Adjustment after by the Commission. Staff is recommending landscaping is planted within the five foot setback in the front of the property. Street trees are recommended in the right of way of the site as well. Staff would recommend the fence between the building and the property line on the southeast side be removed. The sign in the front of the property will need to be used for the company or removed from the site. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by E. Castro Roofing and Siding LLC for 
a site plan amendment and special permit and changing conditions to allow for a contractor's business with outside storage that will be screened from view. And, and the variance to the five foot setback required for the vehicle use area be approved for the following reasons. The request would appear would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area, as it is an existing business with no complaints. The request would not appear to have a negative impact upon the surrounding area, as much of Franklin Street is commercial uses. And with the following conditions, that a six-foot solid privacy fence is installed along the southwest, northwest, and southeast property line, and the five-foot chain-link fence along the northeast property line remains. That landscaping, such as shrubs, is planted in the five-foot setback between the front property line and the pavement, and street trees are planted in the right-of-way. That any outside storage of equipment or material shall be stacked no higher than the fence. The sign in the front of the property shall be removed or used for the company. And that the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, etc., including but not limited to parking, landscaping, screening, drainage, setbacks, etc. All right, any initial questions for staff from the commission? This is Trost. Uh, what are the screening, re screening requirements other than the landscaping as far as fencing, or is there solid fencing requirement? It's, it's, it's a six foot privacy fence. Six foot like privacy solid. fence? Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there initial questions? It made a comment about a chain link fence on the five foot setback, but then also having shrubs planted there. I was for visibility for the alley, but wouldn't the shrubs take that away? This is Schrader with Maybe staff. I'm just confused. Right, this is Schrader with staff. So um, what we're talking about there is the, um, the, the five foot portion of chain link fence is not, we're not talking about the portion parallel with Franklin, we're talking about the five foot sections along each side. On the one side, there's an alley. On the other side, there's a, a house with a driveway right along the property line. And you know, as you come out of that either alley or driveway, uh, if there's a solid fence all the way to the property line, it creates mm -hmm. uh, a visibility issue. So we're looking for uh, that chain link fence to be allowed to be you know, Turn to the corner a little ways. To... Yeah, essentially all the way along Franklin and then turn the corner a little ways. There will be lands, landscaping you know, along the front edge, but that shouldn't interfere at the corners. Thank you. Will they then be able to jog that solid privacy fence and then back out to the property line then once they get back that certain distance from the corners? Yeah, so we're looking for the existing chain link to remain all the way along the, the front edge of Franklin, mm -hmm. and essentially five... Turn the corner for a turn the corner for five foot in either chain link or a non solid wood fence would be another alternative, and then it go to solid go fence. to solid fence the rest of the way. Okay. Okay. Other initial questions for staff? Is there a maximum height? Maybe I didn't, maybe I missed it in the reading. Is there a maximum heights that items can be stored? Not above the fence. It's in the conditions. Okay, I missed that. Thank you. There normally would not be unless specifically provided by condition, and we were recommending that as one of the conditions to not allow anything to be stacked higher than the fence. Otherwise, you're you know, not effectively screened. Rob Nichols, Council Liaison, um, and I just wanted to clarify, I saw, and I'm looking at a Google Maps picture, but currently on the alley side, it's already all a, um, a solid wooden fence. Um, would we be requiring them to push that solid wooden fence back and put in a chain link fence back to the whatever portion it would uh, be? This is Schrader with staff, and um, Lexi can maybe comment, but I think the is there any solid fencing existing 
that complies. I think it's all too short, isn't it? No, the six foot goes in. This is Blanco staff. I believe the portion on the south end is six foot. Mm -hmm. When I was standing there, it was taller than me. So there <laughs> it couldn't have been, I had to jump over to see, so. Right. so so just to yeah, further expand on that, um, the ordinance does require for, you know, because this site was specifically approved to be a, a different use, specifically conditioned on no outside storage. So that's just a change in use and asking to add the storage. So I think there may be some solid fencing that is six and some that's not. Um, we're going to re require that it all be six, but in the area where we won't require the solid fencing um, that if there is that I think there's some solid fencing there now they it would be an option to just remove every other board and leave that portion up if they chose to is the applicant here and want to address the commission Okay, anyone else on phone or Zoom that uh, wants to speak on this agenda item? Okay, anyone else in the chambers who wants to speak on this agenda item or these agenda items? Okay, do we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved, Schoberg. Okay, so second. Second, Shirk. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the public hearing is closed. Do we have a motion from the commission? Uh, yes, Lystico. I will make the motion that the request by E. Castro Roofing and Siding LLC for a site plan amendment and change in conditions to allow for contractors business with outside storage that will be screened uh, from view and a variance to the five foot setback required for the vehicular use area in the R4CZ conditional zoning district located at 42 Franklin Street be approved for the following, oh, be approved with the following conditions. That a six foot solid privacy fence is installed along the southwest, northwest, and southeast property line, and the five foot chain link fence along the northeast property line remains. That landscaping, such as shrubs, is planted in the five foot setback between the front property line and the pavement and street trees are planted in the right of way. That any outside storage of equipment or materials shall be stacked no higher than the fence. The sign in the front of the property shall be removed or used for the company. And that the final site plan meets all applicable, applicable city codes, regulations, et cetera, including but not limited to parking, landscaping, screening, drainage, setbacks, et cetera. Second, Surfling. Okay. Any discussion by the commission? To do um, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion is carried. Next item on the agenda is a request by Caitlin Strom and Tyler Tweed for a special permit to allow for an urban animal hobby farm to allow for six chickens in the R2, one and two family residence district located at 1533 Glenny Avenue. And this is on pages uh, 77 through 84 of your packet. Can we have the staff report, please? Yeah, this is uh, Seth Heimberger with the staff report. Uh, Caitlin Strobel and Tyler Swede are the applicants. Uh, the uh, applicants requesting a special permit for an urban animal hobby farm that would allow to have uh, six chickens. Uh, due to the small size of the lot and neighboring lots, it would appear that the special permit request for an urban animal hobby farm maybe have a negative impact on the area, on the surrounding uses. Uh, proposed hobby farm would uh, not appear to have an, an impact on traffic conditions. Uh, there are no trails in the immediate vicinity. Uh, the site in question is owned R212 Family Residence District and has been such since 1969. To the north, southeast, and west is all residential, zoned R212 Family Residence District. 
Uh, the home of the site was built in 1953. Nearby homes were constructed between 1940s and 1950s. Um, screening is not required. Uh, there are no drainage issues associated with the site. Uh, property in question is not located in a special flood hazard area according to FEMA. Um, the, uh, there are uh, eight-inch sewer and four-inch drain tile along Glenny Avenue. Uh, this request will have no impact on utilities. Uh, future land use map designates this area as low-density residential. Uh, special permit requests will be in conformance with uh, the uh, future land use map. Uh, the City of Waterloo adopted the Urban Animal Hobby Farm regulations in 2017, which states that Urban Animal Hobby Farms shall be allowed within city limits on lots and parcels of land. Um, as an accessory use to principal permitted dwelling when uh, several criteria are met for small supplies, animals such as chickens, then confined area of uh, fenced area of 10,000 square feet for the first two animals and 2,500 square feet for each additional animal um, in the side and rear yard uh, only is required. The applicant uh, only has 4,953 square feet of potential fenced in area, which is 15,047 square feet less than the Minimum 20,000 square feet of fenced area to have six chickens. Uh, variance will therefore be required to allow for six chickens and a variance to the minimum of uh, 20,000 square feet of fenced in area required to have these six chickens. Uh, the, therefore, staff recommends the request by Caitlin Strobel and Tyler Tweed for a special permit for an urban animal hobby farm to allow for three and 14 square feet chicken coop fenced in area uh, with six chickens in the R2. Uh, be denied for the following reasons. Property does not meet the minimum in fenced in area requirement of 10,000 square feet. Approval of the special permit and variances would appear to have a negative impact on the area, as most of the lots in the immediate vicinity are less than 10,000 square feet. Uh, approval of the special permit and variances would set a precedent uh, for other similar requests. And uh, the applicant is present. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any initial questions for staff? Okay. All right. Would you like to come forward and address, state your name and your address for the record? My name is Caitlin Strobel, and I live at 1533 Glenny Avenue. Does anyone have any questions for the Strobel? When you when you like made this request initially, were you informed of like being under the amount of square foot required? Um, no, I tried looking up and seeing what the regulations were for Waterloo, but I couldn't find them online. Okay. Yeah. This is Commissioner Wilbert. Um, we're looking at a map, an aerial map of the property. Where would the proposed coop be? The coop would be behind the garage. Okay. And then we would have the run running alongside the garage. So I believe the house faces north, so it would be the south side of the garage. And then the, uh, I believe, west side would be the run. Okay. And has staff heard from any surrounding properties in regards to the request? Oh, hi. I don't know, I had one person call and then she's like, are, are they gonna have roosters? I'm like, no, no roosters in city limits. Um, and then she, she had no concerns at all regarding the request. And that was the only phone call I received, but um, nothing nothing negative or nobody that was flatly against it. Just out of curiosity, it, um, because I know when the ordinance went into place and there is more interest in this, is there a place on the city website where someone can act Someone in the public can get this information more more easily. This is Trader with staff. Um, the urban animal hobby farm regulations are a part of the zoning ordinance, and the zoning ordinance is on the city's website under the um, planning and zoning department. So um, we could look at maybe trying to make that a little m more obvious. You know, some people may not know that it to look in the zoning ordinance portion of it. Okay. This is Lystico. Is is that document the zoning ordinance? Is it searchable as far as the document? So if you type in farm or something, it gets closer to it. Um, 
it's a PDF, okay. so I guess I'm not positive. I mean, it may depend on it your your type of Adobe if you have professional versus just reader. I'm not sure if you okay. can search on any of them or not, but it is a PDF document. This is Tros. I got a quick question. I know in 2017 the the urban hobby farm uh, policy was was developed. How, how were the square? Can you walk me through how the square footage is arrived at? That's what I was questioning as well. Like, I feel like it should be denied because it's quite a bit under the required square footage. But to me, it seems like a ton of square footage for chickens compared to <laughs> yeah. a different type of animal. Right. So are you throwing, yeah, does it, throw, does it throw chickens in with other kind of small animals too? Yeah, huge yeah, area. Right. Yeah. This is Schrader with staff. Um, yeah. I, I will note when, b before the 2017 amendment, um, chickens were prohibited altogether within the city limits other than um, like on a farm uh, setting. And there was uh, a push for allowing the um, chickens and other um, hobby farm types settings. Uh, uh, there were some um, property owner inputs as well as some um, uh, council member uh, input. And as we went through the process, what those regulations should be was definitely a big discussion um, with some uh, pushing for less restrictive numbers and some pushing for not allowing chickens in the city whatsoever other than in a, you know, a farm type setting. So what was landed on was kind of a compromise based on all of that input. So. Mr. Nichols would like to talk. Okay. Uh, Nichols, uh, Rob Nichols, Council Liaison. I have a question for the applicant and um, for staff. Uh, so first for the applicant, um, was the number six arrived at for any reason? Can you uh, just speak to number six? Um, yeah. So um, I was just trying to decide how much we could use, like just me and Tyler personally. And six was... Um, just about how many we would need to have like a gear supply of eggs roughly it depends on how much they would lay. So four being on the lower side would probably be sufficient, but it really depends on how much they lay, especially in like the winter time since it's colder in Iowa. And then for staff, um, what is the minimum requirement? I guess the minimum amount of chickens or maximum, I guess, amount of chickens um, based on her squared footage of her lot, she could have. So the minimum that she can, right? The the minimum that she can have per ordinance is zero, because she can't meet the minimum of ten thousand square feet of fenced area to have any. The way the ordinance currently reads, you need a minimum fenced area of ten thousand square feet, and with that ten thousand square feet, you can have two chickens. And then you need 2,500 square feet of additional area per um, the additional chickens that you add. So based on six, it would actually be 20,000 square feet. So, but the minimum she could have is zero based on the lot size of the property. And then also like the, the front yard would be excluded. And then, you know, that like the house and the garage would have been minused out, but they're supposed to be in the, the rear yard. Rear side. Rear side. Rear side. So again, just to clarify, this is Commissioner Wilbur. The square feet that you're considering is just in the back part of the lot. Okay. Um, is there anyone else on phone or by Zoom who wants to speak on this agenda item? Okay. And is anyone else here to speak on this agenda item? This is Trader with staff. I will just, you know, as a reminder, um, I think it wasn't last month's meeting, but the meeting before, mm -hmm. um, we had a discussion of some potential amendments to the zoning ordinance, and one of which on the list was uh, a desire um, by a, a council member to uh, have us look at the urban animal hobby farm specifically for chickens and to consider um, lessening the restrictions. So just throwing that out there that that has been requested. Um, that 
you know, hasn't been you know, any sort of potential amendment, hasn't been uh, initiated. We haven't really started uh, discussion on that. It actually didn't, you know, when the commission discussed kind of trying to prioritize potential amendments, that one didn't really um, raise to the top, but I, I just wanted to bring that up. There has been that discussion um, as to the city of Waterloo's um, restrictions on chickens and whether or not it should be lowered. Um, but staff is recommending denial based on it being nowhere, unfortunately, really close to minimums. When a private individual applies for a special permit for an urban animal hobby farm, is it specific to the, spe the, the species that they're seeking that permit for, in this case, chickens and a certain number? Or is it just strictly it's an urban animal hobby farm and any of those animals that are included in an urban animal farm can be placed in them within that space? Um, that's a good question, I guess. As worded, it was specifically requested for chickens. As the ordinance reads, it delineates between small animals, which chickens is included in, but there are other animals that right. are included in, in within that. So, uh, in my opinion, if a site is deemed appropriate um, for six chickens, um, that would, in my mind, be appropriate for anything else that would fall under small animals uh, that would. And so the that same square footage different. for the first two applies to other small animals, not just chickens. Is that correct? Correct. I think I can try and. They're not delineated separately. I can find it in the ordinance. I think it kind of provides some examples of animals that meet the um, small animal definition. But let's see if I can find that quick. Yeah, I don't know it either, so. <laughs> While you're looking that up, um, this is Commissioner Wilbur. So, um, no matter what our recommendation is today, this the next step will be going to the Board of Adjustment. Is that correct? Correct. The, yes, the Planning Commission will make a recommendation only. Okay. Any other questions while we wait um, to see what that says? confined area uh, for small animals is 10,000 square feet and small animals are listed as such as rabbits, minks, ferret, chinchilla, chicken, goose, pigeon, pheasant, quail, duck, and similar animals excluding rooster, guinea, falcon, and exotic animals as determined in the reasonable discretion of the city planner or designee. Thanks. <laughs> I <couldn't help. laughs> was looking right over it. Motion. This is Schoberg. I would make a motion that we deny the request by Caitlin Strobel and Tyler Tweed for a special permit for an urban, hobby, urban animal hobby farm to allow for, at, for a 314 square foot chicken coop fenced area in six, w allowing six chickens in the R2 multiple residence district at 1533 Glenny Avenue. Do you have a second? Second, Shirk. Okay. Any discussion by the commission? Yeah, Commissioner Lystico. I, I will note that it is quite difficult to find this ordinance and uh, maybe there is, I did, I was able to search through the ordinance here and I found it, but I'm also a commissioner. How hard is this for the average citizen in Waterloo? Mm -hmm. um, I, I would, 
I, I don't know how we remedy that, um, but I, I th maybe there could be a quick information on how to search these documents or something just to make it a little bit, e bit easier for our, our constituents to figure this out. This is Commissioner Trost, I'd like, I'd like to also add, I think, yeah, I'm glad that the, that the uh, staff is considering another commission that are looking at how we can maybe revisit this this policy and and how we might delineate some of the some of the small animals a little bit differently i think it's dependent upon a little bit about what kind of site do they create i mean do they dig in the ground do they create bad situations as far as a backyard being worn down and then also noises and those kinds of things and some of them are prob probably a little bit different than others now if we can get to that point that'd be great because i think for chickens particularly not the roosters. It seems like it's a lot of square footage for just a couple of chickens. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think it needs to be denied because of the square footage, but I think the square footage needs to be looked at yeah. and evaluated. Right. I would, this Commissioner Bober, I would agree with that. And um, t no matter what the end vote ends up being, um, we make a recommendation to the Board of Adjustment, and then they will consider your request as well. Um, and vote on it. So we make a recommendation. So I would also plan on, um, you know, attending that meeting and making sure you speak with that board um, as well as your city council um, in regards to the zoning amendments and your interest as well. And our comments are in the in the meeting minutes also. So those are able to be used. Mm -hmm. I, I do have one final question, uh, Lystico. When this does go to the Board of Adjustments, could they theoretically approve for two chickens? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, so um, any further discussion? So just to clarify, the motion was to deny, so a yes vote would be to deny. Okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The motion to deny was carried. <laughs> Thank you for your, your time and um, all right. The next item on the agenda is review and adoption of the comprehensive plan and future land use map for the city of Waterloo. This is Schrader with staff. Um, the this was on last month's uh, where we didn't really get it to you too much ahead of time, so it was tabled, which we were fine with. Um, we did get it out, so you've got the entire comp plan in you. This has been a long time coming, and I'll turn it over uh, to Nick at Intercog, who might have some additional comments, and uh, uh, last push for adoption. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Nick Fratsky here, Iowa North End Regional Council of Governments, as, uh, as Mr. Schrader mentioned um, we have been working on this for a while um, and you guys most of you guys have been involved in the process um, I'm here to answer any questions uh, really the only thing that changed um, between last time and the time prior to that were a couple of uh, map changes that we needed to get um, they just didn't match up with kind of the current conditions um, as they changed over the course of the uh, plan development so um, like I said, anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer and um, also be happy to get the recommendation. Um, and the future land use map is on page 187, if you're wanting. And then, I think it might be behind you there, too. Right yeah. there, too. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit bigger. A little bit. And in color. Um, any questions for Nick or staff? No. We do appreciate all the work that, of course. Absolutely. Likewise. Okay. Well, the existing one um, is a little outdated, so it'll be... Mm -hmm. Good to get this adopted. Yep. And then how often, I mean, will it be the same amount of time again in the future? Or Hopefully, what's the goal? No. What's the <laughs> I mean, goal? It's always a good idea, best practice to, you know, review, um, you know, yearly, um, every couple of years, um, just to 
you know, as things change, mm -hmm. um, to keep an eye on things, I would say at a, at a maximum every five years, just take a look at it to, you know, make sure that you don't need any amendments and that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, over typically look at, at 10 to 20 years for a comprehensive plan, you know, 20 years is probably a little longer than, than a city like Waterloo would want to go. But um, generally speaking, that's kind of the range. The straighter staff, I agree totally. Usually every couple of years, you know, just trying to keep it um, for any minor tweaks as needed, especially the, the future land use map, kind of one of the more important uh, components of the comprehensive plan. Uh, but then that, yeah, five to 10, preferably better to be closer to the five for, you know, looking at more of the um, larger overhauls like this. Definitely shouldn't be 20. Oh. <laughs> Any discussion or questions by the commission? Mm -hmm. We want to make a recommendation to adopt the draft, the proposed draft. This is Trost. I'll move to recommend the review and adoption of the submitted comprehensive plan and future land use map for the city of Waterloo, uh, dated 2023, May 31st, 2023. Second. Second, Lysticko. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Anyone else, I forgot to ask, sorry, anyone else um, on the phone or by Zoom or in the chambers wanna address, uh, speak on this agenda item? Okay, all those in favor of adoption, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank we you all. recommend adoption. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you. <laughs> First one in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> An accomplishment. Um, all right, any other discussion items for this evening? Yes, some very bad news. Next month is Virginia's last month. Is hmm. In a, in a member of the board. Oh. Oh. So are you bringing do you need treats? to elect a chairperson now or just be thinking about it for next month? For next month it will need to be new election. And we'll, the vice chair will assume the chair, so we would need to elect a vice chair. <laughs> if I'm elected to be the chair. <laughs> No, you automatically assume it per, per the bylaws. I'm not, jo I'm not joking. <laughs> That's in the bylaws, yeah. Okay. And 15 months later, you'll be gone with me. Um, the same month. Yeah. So be thinking about, um, can, remind me, can a vice chair be from a, a delegate from another commission? Yes, the, the, the chair cannot, but the vice chair okay. can be from the delegated. So uh, uh, another de representative from another delegation can be a vice chair. So just be thinking about that. And, another delegation. Uh, the next meeting is on July 11th then. Please continue to let staff know in advance if you can't come to the meetings. I know they appreciate it and you all have been doing a good job about that. So any other discussion items? If not, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Schoberg. Second. Circling. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.